Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Uh, several days ago on Steve Frambro's X account, Twitter account, whatever you want to call it, um, he posted this. That was on May 30th, 2024. Interesting collabs happening at Aptera Motors. You see an Aptera Solar. Uh, this is taped on here, so uh, something relatively new. But it looks like they are partnering with some companies to use the Aptera solar panels on them. Um, and the question is, is, which company is this? If you look in the comments, someone says explain. Steve Ambrose says, I, you'll have to wait for the customer to do that. And then someone down here guesses that maybe it's a cyber truck or something. Now this is definitely not a cyber truck. Uh, this is not stainless steel or anything. If you go back to Steve Fambro's um, X account, you see that he met with a trailer company called Polydrops. That's nice to meet you, Polydrops. And this, someone on our Discord channel made the astute observation that what you could be looking at is this part of the trailer with this in the background. So let's go back and look at that. Okay, so you see here, there's a little bit of a door right here that you see. And if you look at this, you could be looking at the front part of that Polydrops um, trailer. And if you go to Polydrops X account, if you look at their likes, you see that they liked this um, post by Steve Fambro. So the circumstantial evidence seems to be pretty strong that Polydrops is collaborating with Aptera Motors to put their solar panels on their trailer. Polydrops is this um, aerodynamic teardrop shaped um, travel trailer that uh, is made to be aerodynamic so it's easily pulled by an EV or smaller vehicles. They're light and aerodynamic much like the Aptera. So it is a, um, it, the collaboration makes sense. And if you look at their thing, they're going to have solar panels up top here and solar panels in the front. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you see the solar charging right here. Um, so I don't know. A few days ago, if you went to this web page, it said here the solar panels work in progress. Now they're saying 1300 watts. So maybe this is after the Aptera collaboration that they've kind of finalized uh, what they plan on doing here. Uh, the other interesting thing is in news about solar. If you look back at this, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll back. Sorry for the scrolling. If you look at this back on January 31st, Steve Amber was talking about this patent that was granted. This is the patent that was granted. It is a solar panel plant for making laminated solar panels, having preformed substrate with convex surface and method for continuous processing of the same. This was granted on January 16th, 2024. However, recently what's happened is there is another Aptera um, solar patent, which was rejected. So the curved laminate solar panel and method of manufacturing thereof, that is application 18-169576. And there's a final rejection letter that was mailed on 5-31-2024. So just a few days ago. Now, I am neither an intellectual property lawyer or an engineer, so I tried to wade through this and I, I can't give you any like great insights on it. But it is kind of interesting to me that uh, this whole process started back in two, um, uh, February of 2023. And then you see that there was a non-final rejection. Uh, here it is right here. In se September of 2023, there's a non-final rejection here. And then there was a response on February 21st, 2024. And so this is their, um, this is argument. So like, if you look at their non-final rejection, basically the, um, the person that was reviewing it says that it's too similar to three other patents. And the three other patents that they talk about is this patent patent by Gocherman and another patent by Giron and another patent by DeVries, DeVries, okay? And so then they say that's too similar. 
then um, Aptera's intellectual property lawyers come back. They make an explanation. They amend a couple of things. They say, you know, we're, we're, we're different from them for these reasons. They seem to make a big deal out of like not having aluminum in there or something. Um, but then the final rejection basically says that uh, they, they don't buy it. That it's too similar to these three patents. And the three patents, I looked them up. It's this one, Contoured Solar Generator by Gotraman. Uh, that was back in 1988. And if you look at it, yeah, it's like talking about a laminated solar panel that you can bend. Um, so yeah, it is similar. So I don't understand how, like I, this can't be the first laminated solar panel. There, there are like thousands out there. So I'm sure there's many similar patents. And then there's another one here about a roof panel it's comprising an integrated solar voltaic module. So this is another laminated solar panel that you put on the roof. Now they granted this in 2015 and it's very similar to this that was in 1988. So I'm not sure why this was granted. And then another similar one isn't granted. This is another one from 2013, which is a method for manufacturing a sheet uh, on, you know, a continuous sheet of, uh, of laminating a solar panel. Now, the method actually they pulled it seems like they pulled that out of this patent and they made a separate patent out of it and that one got granted that one got granted in january um if you look at the rejection letter what you'll find is claims 15 to 20 have been withdrawn and claims 1 9 21 and 20 and they added 21 and 22. if you look at the claims okay let's go back and look at the claims oh here they are So um, they amend this to say that there is a solar panel, uh, including a silicon wafer of less than 0.4 millimeters. And then they said that they're gonna preform it. It's chemically strength strengthened. You can bend it, it's laminated, this, that, and the other. And then the parts they pulled out, if see withdrawn is 15 through 20. This is all talking about the method of manufacturing it. So it looks like they pulled that out. They put a separate patent into that. That one got granted. So that one's not a problem, but they're just talking about this solar panel that is laminated and strong and you can, you can bend it. Um, I kind of looked through the original application and I'm not enough of an engineer to know if someone can just reverse engineer this thing from the patent application. I don't think so because I have it from a fairly reliable source that this patent application does not include like the last year of work on the solar panel, which if it did, maybe the patent would have been granted, but also it means that probably it's very difficult to replicate what Aptera is doing based on the information in this um, application. And it does seem to me that the information in this, um, in this application isn't like ground earth breaking. Um, I, I perused this again, not an intellectual property uh, attorney or an engineer, but I perused this application and it doesn't seem like anything that they're saying is uh, super earth shattering. I think like most people working on this would know about it. So I think there's a lot of details left out of this that Aptera knows about that's not explained in the, um, in the application. And I'm thinking no one can, it's, it's not very easy to take this application and just re, re, redo what um, Aptera has done. So I think overall, they're pretty safe from someone trying to replicate their panel. And I, my guess is if anyone wants to replicate their panel, they're gonna just try to re-engineer it themselves and see if they can improve on it. And um, people like poly, probably poly drops, they have no interest in replicating this thing. Um, they, they found a partner that's willing to do it. They have a good product, so they're going to collaborate. And I don't think it's a big enough market that, um, that they're going to be too fearful of anyone, um, uh, anyone kind of encroaching into their space. Um, the, and I think they already have the patent for the manufacturing of it, which maybe is the more important part. I don't know. Um, it does look like even though this is called final rejection, they do have from the wording of it, from what I understand, it looks like they have a chance to respond. 
Um, if you look at this, it says extensions of time may be available, uh, a shortened statute period for replies to expire three months from the mailing of this communication. So they have about three months from the mailing of that of this um, application to respond. And let's see, conclusion. Um, this action is made final. A shortened statutory period for this final action is set to expire three months from the mailing of this action. In the event a first reply is filed within two months and the advisory action, advisory action is not mailed until after the end of the three months shortened statutory period, then the short shortened statutory period will expire on the date uh, that the advisory action is mailed and any extent extension fee percent will be calculated from the mailing date. In no event, however, will the statutory reply period expire later than six months from the date of this final action. So there is a chance to reply to this. So I, I imagine uh, Aptera's uh, legal counsel is going to reply to it. And there's nothing to say that they can't apply for yet another patent, which I, I assume that if this final response doesn't go through, they are going to try again because this seems to be a pretty important part of their IP uh, portfolio. So I think the biggest... Uh, questions about this was is this final action really final seems to me that it's not if any of you guys are patent lawyers let me know it does look like there is a chance to respond another time even though it, the action is final um uh, according to uh, this bolded statement here and of course you can always apply again and i think the last concern was now anyone can just replicate the work that aptera has done based on this patent application. I believe that is not the case for two reasons. My brief perusal of the application does not seem that it is detailed enough that anyone could uh, replicate the manufacturing of the solar panel because there's a lot of like generalities in it. Um, and I don't think that it's specific enough to actually replicate it. And two, um, again, I have it from a pretty good source that this application does not include about a year's worth of solar um engineering work that was done at the tail end and so even if it were specific enough there's still at least a year's worth of engineering work that's not included in this application so um overall i mean obviously it would have been better if they'd been granted this patent but i don't think it's like a huge deal um it, it's not replicatable from based on this information i don't think it's a big enough market that someone would try to replicate it anyway at this point and uh, there it looks like there is a chance for them to respond within three months of this date. And lastly, they can always apply for yet another patent and revise it again. And maybe include the last year's solar work, which may strengthen the claims of the patent. So that's kind of my take home message from uh, the time I took to review this thing. Um, let me know if you guys had a chance to review it. I will uh, link this uh, in the description below. Tell me what you guys think. Um, again, I wish I was an intellectual property, uh, attorney, and I could probably give you a better, uh, information about this. I was not able to locate a IP lawyer, uh, that wanted to talk about it and tell us more about it. But, um, yeah, that's just my kind of amateur take on this thing. All right. Thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.